Donald Trump presenting his economic plan in New York this week, a key point of which is to reject President Obama's multinational trade agreements, including, of course, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. This is the president has enlisted Ohio governor and former Republican presidential candidate John Kasich to sell TPP to the American public. University of Maryland <laughs> economics professor Peter Morisi joins us now with his take on all this. So, Peter, this is the establishment against Donald Trump on trade, whether it's John Kasich for the Republicans. Uh, we had Mike Bloomberg today uh, with, a, with an op-ed along with Tom Donahue, American Chamber of Commerce, in favor of the TPP. It's the establishment saying that trade and the TPP in particular is good. Donald Trump saying it's bad. Who's right? Donald Trump is right. The TPP is not a good idea. You know, we're going to lose a lot of manufacturing jobs. Granted, there's a lot of automation going on in manufacturing. But there's hardly a factory in the world that has no workers at all. And I'd like to have those workers here. Now, the establishment argues, in fact, this is what Mike Bloomberg and Tom Donahue said today, that, that we're losing jobs because they're being automated out of existence. It's not because of trade, it's because of automation. And yet, this is happening in the same week we, we heard that Ford Motor Company is moving all of its small car manufacturing down to Mexico. So, what's the truth there? Well, we've always had automation, but you know, we had mechanization on the farm. Do we want to give up our agricultural industry? Uh, we still employ people on the farm, even though one farmer can do the work of 10. Likewise, one factory worker may be able to do the work of three. Uh, but he's going to earn a lot of money. It's going to be a high-skilled job, and it makes sense for America. Also, this huge trade deficit we have with Asia, we have to borrow money, mortgage our future, sell our assets. Look at all the real estate in New York that's now owned by Asians. That's true. Do we really want to go down that path? Yeah. What yeah. you've really got here is the establishment doesn't want to lose its grip. Hillary Clinton represents the status quo ante. These folks basically don't want to lose their grip on a, on a scheme that they've right. enjoyed for so long. Now, of course, she has, has currently, at one point she said TPP mm -hmm. was, was the gold standard of trade deals. Now she is against it. Uh, Trump says, you know, within five minutes of, of taking office, if she's elected, she'll be in favor of TPP after making a little tweak. Uh, is that the way you see it going down, if she's elected president? Absolutely. She wrote an op-ed in the main newspaper during the primaries uh, indicating that she pretty much had the same trade policy as, as, as Donald Trump. At the same time, Alan Blinder from Princeton, who's one of her informal advisors, basically took the Bloomberg tack. Since then, uh, Hillary's been saying, well, I'm not going for TPP until we change it so that it meets right. my high standards. Right. It sounds like Bill Clinton on NAFTA. It's the same scam. <laughs> but we had a test run on Hillary. Yeah. While she was Secretary of State, we got the U.S.-Korea free trade agreement, which is sort of the pilot of yeah. TPP, and that Peter, cost us 100,000 jobs. It, it costs a lot of jobs. Very quickly, China, I know it's not a part of TPP, but they are protectionists like crazy. Of course, we let all their goods in. Should that change quickly? Absolutely. We really need to negotiate a better deal with China. A 45% tariff suits me. Mm. According to the wow. World Bank, its currency is woefully undervalued. All right. Peter Marisi, thank you very much. Good stuff. Appreciate it.